Oh my god. I'm Chase. I buy storage units at auctions with my two companions. And I show you what reality TV doesn't. Welcome to Chase Thrifts. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Chase Thrifts episode. Today we have a lot of stuff to show you. Mmm. This is for sale on eBay. This thing is three and a half pounds. Can be used as a nice wine glass. I cleaned it, don't worry. Or, you know, a nice hefty murder weapon so $24.99 get on there and buy it we still got our candles going they're just little short candles now so today's episode in our little mini series for this week is antique maps books blueprints and little antiquities that i've found in the last like five to nine ten units this includes the other unit we got the other day from the uh world war ii pilot I'm still going through that unit, believe it or not. There's so much stuff to go through as far as paperwork, but uh, we'll be revealing some of that stuff here as long as, as well with the other units here coming up. So stay tuned. And we'll go over to the left right here, a little tiny table, and I'll show you what we sold this actually yesterday. All right, if you divert your attention over this tiny table over here that we got cleaned off since yesterday, we have the sugar and cream uranium glass that we sold. I think I sold it for $40. Not too bad. We'll be packing that up here. We sold the the tumblers, which I, I pretty much all these glasses and stuff I marketed as Kool-Aid Kool-Aid cups. Um, but these sold for like for 15 bucks. This sold for $20. This big old Kool-Aid pitcher. We sold this uh, Marilyn Monroe picture frame canvas for $15. I've had this, oh my gosh, forever. I didn't even know where it was. It took me like 20 minutes to find it. Um, we sold some more electronic tubes. Uh, I think this was uh, either $10 or $20 for this pair of uh, you know, tubes right here. I think they're brand new in the box. And then we sold this turntable, which is actually broken, but we found it in the original box right here. I think I sold it for $40. So, not a bad little draw right there, 100 bucks for one day. And to pack this stuff all up, we have a lot of leftover, but we found them in one of the units here recently. Uh, I had my wife go through all this wrapping paper, have what she wanted to take, and the rest will just wrap up in wrapping paper. Be nice, huh? Nice little Christmas time wrapping paper. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So let's get to, uh, we're gonna start off with trinkets, some cool little trinkets I found. And uh, we'll get you guys closer to the, the table here and uh, we'll zoom in on some of these trinkets. So these right here are your normal uh, everyday portable cassette players right here and here and here, there's three of them. Now over here, these two right here, which I've never seen these before and you guys probably have, I don't know, you tell me. So this right here is a portable phonograph 45 player. They're so hard to get out of here sometimes. So you take it out. There is the needle here, and you would put your record right here, a 45. And let's get a close up of the, what it actually is. It's a Midland solid state phonograph. And I got two of these, almost exactly this, they are exactly the same, right here, one and two. I've never seen portable phonographs, but these are pretty, pretty neat right there. Okay, so next up we have some smaller, smaller trinkets. And we're gonna start with this right here. Um, I have no idea what this is. It was found with a bunch of antiques. There's no writing on it at all. All I can think of is like a, a baby rattler, but it's solid, see? It doesn't make any noise. So I don't know what this is. If you guys know what it is, let's get a close up of it. It's about three inches long, three inches. And it's solid wood. 
I thought it was really cool uh, as far as like, it's gotta have some kind of value. There's a flat spot right there. So it kind of sits, well, I thought it would sit in the flat spot. No, it just rolls like that. Like a baby rattler almost, but do they make baby rattlers without rattling? Is that a thing? It's like Bam Bam's first hammer right there from Flintstones. Next up, and I don't know if these have any value to them, but they are very old. These are uh, Parker pins. So this is a pin right here. These are with all the other antiques I found. I honestly have not figured out how to use it yet, but here we go. There's one of the Parker pins and here's another Parker pin right here. And if you get it out of the box, you can see it right there. I have no idea how old Parker pins are. I haven't even looked at any of this stuff up, by the way. I'm just gonna play dumb the whole time. You guys tell me what, what I'm looking at here. Um, it looks like it. Yeah, there we go. Look how old that little pen is right there. I think it's, it's almost like an old, uh, ink pen, like an actual ink pen. All right. See this one right here, it looks like. Yep, same way. Let's try these paper and write on them. Uh, the ink is probably all dried up, I'm guessing. And you probably have to have an ink well. I'm, if, I'm, if I think right, you might have to have an ink well with these, right? So you can dab it into the ink. Oh well, we tried. All right, next up here, these little trinkets we got. We have a really old elf on the shelf and he was actually glued, his head was glued to like a, a really crappy stocking so he doesn't have a hat. I think it's really cool, look how old he is. Yeah, old, vintage, antique elf on the shelf. Then we have Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy right here. Uh, they're like paper made with cardboard inside of it, it feels like. Uh, somebody was telling me these are really, really valuable. You can feel the cardboard inside this guy's face in here too. Uh, but there is no maker's mark or anything on there. It looks like they're handmade. And I think they are Christmas ornaments, to be honest. Um, yeah, Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. Okay, next up we have a box right here. And in the box, you open it up, so antique marbles. Now I have no <laughs> idea or nothing, I know nothing about marbles, but these are antique, they look like to me, like really early models of, the early model. There's just old marbles. Everything out of this unit was old. This is all from still that West Lafayette unit with some stuff dabbled in from uh, the World War II unit as well, the flight director's unit marble. I don't know the value of marbles, anything about marbles. I think they're valuable, but here, yeah, I don't know. Oh, we're gonna go with this. This is an old warranty right here. And that warranty came out of what I'm using today, this old wallet. I put, I, I snatched it up because now it's my wallet. English Morocco. And the really cool thing about this wallet is it's got really cool texture in there. It's an old, Old wallet, it was brand new when I found it. Now I have an old man wallet. I love it. It holds all my cards beautifully. And this thing keeps coming out right here in the middle, but I gotta switch it over like that. Yeah. Old vintage, I would call it vintage, not antique, but it sounds like an old man. Next up, we're gonna go to this right here. And uh, this thing is pretty dang cool. You can see right here, uh, this is a very old leather case right here, very old. I think you used to have a strap right there. But uh, you pulled out, this was found with a bunch of other antiques from the West Lafayette unit. Right here it is an antique monocle, all right? I didn't know what this was until we found the article online, which I'm gonna put right here right now. And uh, it's from dating back to the 1750s. Probably the oldest things I've ever found in a storage unit. And of course, with the monocle, you gotta try it out with being very careful with this monocle. I think it hold, you hold it like this. Of course, I'm not distinguished enough to use a monocle. Ah. I cannot use it, but 
here we go. I'll try to stop saying super cool all the time, but this stuff kind of just, it's awesome. Um, all right, so we have a box here. It says golds on it. Let me open it up. Take this out. And this is one of the hats that was just sitting inside the unit on top of this box. So it has like dust and crap all over it. But uh, you see it says, um, it has over here, it says, Recording Secretary Merle Rush, Second Vice President, President Logan or Jogan Westfall. We not, oh, it says we nominate up there. It's a nomination hat. First Vice President and Secretary. That's a cool little hat. I like it. God dang it, I said I'll stop saying cool little hat. Oh, never mind. Anyway, there's another little hat in here as well. This looks antique and it says on the inside on the inside right here it says miller and Payne lincoln it has a little don't know, this is for hair right there i'm not really sure i think it comes out further i don't want to break it nope i think that's it there's a little veil right here it goes over what's stitched inside the top right piece right here so it goes over your face like this. Not, not sure, but yeah. And what else is in the box right here? Oh, it has a paper in there. Maybe it'll give us some insight of what this really is. All right, we're gonna go over this very, very fast. Now this is gonna be a, a thing that we're gonna be doing here a lot, this, uh, this video. Um, I'm gonna, you can guys can pause it and read all of it, but we're just gonna go over it really quickly. So I'm wearing the hat of the nominating committee. This hat is of pale green straw and a Paris creation designed especially for Zeta chapter of Delta Kappa Gamma. The colored band is patterned with the white polka dots, etc. etc. That's the nominating committee is happy to present these names for your consideration. Let me know down below what a nominating committee hat is. Uh, we kind of got the gist of it right there, but uh, what the value of one of these is. <laughs> Wow, amazing. From the, the flight unit, these are 1950s TWA boarding passes with postcards inside of them. You can see, I can find the exact date on here to show you. Yep, 19, 1951 right there, it's stamped. There's a TWA one, another TWA one, and this right here is American Airlines. <laughs> Those have some value to them. I don't know exactly how much value, but I know they're value. Okay, so we have a couple more little books right here to go through. I thought they were pretty cool. Um, damn it, I said pretty cool again. All right, anyways. Uh, this one says uh, to William Hill McCarter, who invented the name Cuddy, and it is dated 1922. To Dolly from Francis. There are about two billions of people holding down the Earth's crust. <laughs> Back in 1922, two billion people. <laughs> Try like eight now. Jeez. The game. It's an old book. Old, it's already falling apart in my hands. Look at that, it's already falling apart. I don't, I don't want to handle it any more than I have to. So, let me know down below if you think the who invented the name Cuddy is actually worth some money right there. Now these books right here are, there's two of them. And I, there's so much stuff packed in these, bo or these books, it's hard to get through them without like seeing 50 different things. So over here, there's a, there's a bunch of little clippings right here, right there. And you go over one page, let's see. It says index to stories, stories which open to open talks. And I'm not gonna read that top part, but you can, you can read that top part. You got uh, the first one, um, Josh Billings, etc., etc. You have all these little stories inside this book, 
but with also this with also this book is stashed with a bunch of other stuff. So this is all stories right here, right? It's all got little little, little papers that I haven't even gone through all, all the way yet. Oh wow, this is the uh, this is a funeral paper. Casket bearers. I don't know why that's stuck in here. So here's all the stories right here and super old typewriter paper. Here's another, wait, is this, yeah, this is actually clipped in here. There's something else right here that's folded over. There's some more clippings. School nurses say, solve the food, food problem. You can guys pause that if you want to read it. Let's find a really cool story in here to read. So this one, this one says keep trying, right? I'm trying to hit my, my stand. Keep trying. Once upon a time there were two frogs. They lived in, they lived in a hole. I think it's spelled hole right there. Lived in a hole near a cave. One night they began to dig and hop about. Finally they found a little hole they went down, down. Finally they found themselves down in a cold, dark, dark, damp cellar. The only interesting thing in it that it was a tall, shiny thing sitting next to a little box. The frogs were most curious and jumped on the box. But they couldn't see in, so they hopped about a bit. Then gave one big jump and landed with a splash and a can of cream. One frog said in a deep, heavy voice, I'm gonna drown, I'm gonna drown. The other frog said, I'll kick, I'll kick, I'll kick. And he kicked and kicked and kicked. Kick, 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 kick. The next morning, when the lady looked in her cream can, she saw one dead frog and the other frog that was very much alive sitting on the big part of the butter. Okay. So that's called keep trying. And apparently, one says I'm going to drown and the other said I'll kick. So he, he survived. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's kind of dark. That's kind of dark right there. Oh man. I don't know if I want to read this one, but here, you guys can... I'm not going to read this one out loud, but I'm going to, you can stop the video here if you want to read that. Cause that's so racist. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Let's keep going on here. There's two of these books, by the way, these just, they're so full of different kinds of stories. Holy cow. There's stories in there. Okay, look at, this, look at this one right here. I'm gonna pause it, you can read it if you want. I'll read a little bit of it. This is Russell Herman Corn Conwell, The Ages of Diamonds. The title of this lecture originated way back in 1869 when going to the Tigris River, we hired a guide from Baghdad to show us down to the Arabian Gulf. That guide whom we employed resembled the barbers we found in America. That is, he resembled the barbers in a certain mental characteristics. He thought that it was not only his duty to guide us down to the river, but also to entertain us with stories, curious, weird, ancient, and modern, strange and familiar. Many of them I have forgotten, and I'm glad I have. Yeah, you can, you can pause it and read that if you want. Let me see if I can get to the next page, and you can pause it again. Make sure you guys are in frame so you can read it. That book is very cool. I, I, I like it. I like these little books right here. There's two of them. So this next one right here was also found with this other book and it's sort of the same thing over again. But there's a lot of little papers and clippings and stuff in here. Which I don't, I don't want to fall out. This one says There'll Always Be Christmas by Hilda Butler Farr. There will always be a Christmas to bring us hope and peace and nothing can destroy it. The joy will never cease. Whatever our problems, whatever we must face, we gain a new perspective within this time of grace. <laughs> oh, 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 I just now read this. Okay, let me, let me put these papers to the side real quick. I'll put them back in afterward. Let's, um, 
I know it was like a bunch of glare on here, I'm sorry. Um, right here, Aunt Jemima's Courtship, page 110. What does that mean? Let's figure it out. Page one, I don't even know these pages are numbered. Oh, right there up top. They, they hand numbered all these. Oh my gosh, there's so many little things to go through. Oh man. We're searching for Aunt Jemima's courtship, but look at this. What do we find here? Um, what is this? Permit, I don't, I can't read that. Something about 1855. JD something from his affectionate wife. From St. Nicholas. What the hell? This is cool. This is super old. Holy cow. 1855. See the article here? Excellent selection to serious recitation. Wall girls, if you must know, reckon I must tell ye. Wall, it was the winter time and the father and I were sitting alone in the kitchen. Oh my god, it's it's all in like slang from back then. You guys can pause it and look at it if you want. I'm so I got this camera in a way where I have a little bit of a um, glare on here. It's really kind of making me mad. There we go. A friend is not a feller who is taken by, in by shame. Sham? A friend who is one who... A friend is one who knows our faults and doesn't give a damn. Huh. There's so many little things in here, my gosh. You sit and look at this thing all day. All right, we're done with that book right there. We gotta put all these little things back in it. Okay, this, I got a little bit different angle for the lighting in particular. So this is an old, old menu. So it's for where friends meet for the best to drink and eat. Uh, I think it says Jessman's Sweet Shop, Nebraska City, Nebraska. And it's got a bunch of little things on here. Um, a lot of writing I can't read, but we opened it up very gently. This, uh, this is a really old menu. I don't even know the date it for, but um, we got some pictures in here. So a picture of it looks like a rest stop almost right there. But look at this gentleman right there. He's got a Model A or Model T in the background and he's dressed up in some uh, business attire. And this picture right here, and there's nothing on the back of these pictures to actually see what they're, what they're about. This one right here is a man on top of a Model A or Model T in the background and it looks like his sisters or something right there. <laughs> okay, so the actual menu here is right here. You can see uh, they charged 10 cents for phosphates, which is like, a, a, I'm pretty sure like a cola drink back in the day, like a Coca-Cola. I don't think they even had Coca-Cola in this menu. Special Sundays were 30 cents for Sundays. Here's the lunch menu right here. Peanut butter sandwich is 10 cents. A fried ham is 15 cents. Roast beef is 15 cents. My thumb looks really gross, sorry. Cake is 10 cents. <laughs> I can go all, all day with this. Uh, chili is 15 cents. A head of lettuce and mayonnaise, that's for, that's for a salad. Is 20 cents. Shrimp and mayonnaise. Lobster, lobster and mayonnaise. That's a salad. Sweet pickles, queen olives. Milk is five cents. Hot chocolate is 10 cents. Ovaltine is 10 cents. On the back here, it's really crappy. I can't read anything on the back. It's just, I really kind of hate. But uh, it's like it's almost glued to something at one time. This right here 
is just something I found interesting as well. And I know I try not to like give away people's identity, but there, it's all over these pages. You can't look at this. This is a <clears throat> Nemo Hollis County Schools. See this picture right there? My God. It's a report card. Reading, physiology, penmanship. They used, they used to grade you on penmanship back in the day. And mental arithmetic, US history, grammar, geography, arithmetic, agriculture, drawing. Let's see what kind of what the date is on this. Mm, uh, May 26, 1916. This report card was for. Isn't that insane? That in, that's over 100 years old. That's 100 and f what 104 years old right there. This piece of paper. Here's a postcard. I think it says postcard in the back. Yep, postcard. And it has the people's names right there. Henry R. And they have it written in who's who. So that's Rusty. It's me. He has written, me written right there. Look at how small he is. There's an old classroom right there. I don't know the date of that one is. Oh, look at that old schoolhouse. Here's the high school diploma of Auburn, Nebraska. On the 27th day of May 19, I can't read that last one right there. I'm pretty sure it's 1921. 1921, 100 years old. 100 year old diploma right there. Okay, so we're gonna take a break from all that because I just kind of shoved all that down your guys' throats, so I'm sorry, but something cool has to be seen. Something has to be shown, right? So there's the, these right there. Now, <clears throat> you guys saw my last video, I sold, I did sell that antique um, Cavalier chest, and it was actually from the 1930s. Was, it, on the outside, it had mahogany, and the inside was cedar. Um, and inside the chest, I'm gonna show you what I found. This is a really, really old purse right here. Um, I can't date it exactly. Um, and I haven't really looked into it, honestly. I think we looked into it for a second or two. Uh, let's see if I can get you in frame here. And the name of this particular purse, there's a, there's a pocket inside, or a little wallet inside of here. It has EK down there. Obviously there's nothing in there because I never find anything with full, full wallets full of money or anything. That's just not a thing. Look how old that is. I saw it earlier, you see here, there's a handkerchief and a glove. Okay, so this purse actually says you probably can't see it in your camera. This is Rambler, made in the USA. It's a Rambler purse. It has these little uh, little areas in here. You're gonna unlock it like that. Oh, we didn't look in here. We did not look in here. Rest in peace. A little card right here. Permanent record of the obituary and funeral details of someone. 1968. Health insurance card. Wow, that's an old, that's a 1966 health insurance card. <sighs> oh my God, social security card. Why is that in here? I don't know, but here we go, we have it now. Look at these right here. These are old sunglass clippers. 
it's got to be super old. I don't, I've never seen them like this in like an amber color. Look how like dangly they are. If anybody could tell me what these are exactly, let me know down in the comments below. My God. That might be the key to that chest right there. Either one of these keys. I didn't see the key before I sold it, but it was, it was unlocked. It says Reese. It doesn't have anything written on it. So that might be the keys to the actual um, chest. Oh, there's more stuff in there. See that? Oh my gosh, this is, is this a little powder thing. <laughs> An old powder, uh, whatever you call them. I can't remember exactly the name of them. That's, that's super old. It's almost like it's bronze. There was something else in here I saw. Uh oh, is that for the glasses we found? Oh my god! Oh, let's make sure this is in frame here. DD Stone Cipher MD, Ecologist and Urologist, Nebraska City, Nebraska. Like, oh my god, I'm afraid to even take them out. They're so fragile, they're so fragile. What in the fuck? Look at these, oh my gosh. Look at those, those rims on there. Oh my goodness. And apparently these probably go to this right here. If I'm a guessing man. Not scratching the lens up too bad. Look at them shades. Whew. These gotta be antique. There's no way they're not. here and I get, need to get my other glasses on to see them. Okay, it is 01 dash slash oh my god 10 dash 12k GB the gold GF 12k GF is that gold filled? That what it means gold filled? GF. I wish I could show it on the camera, but it's just it's not gonna show it on there. Yep. 12. Yeah, 01 dash 10 dash 12k GF inside this. Okay. Oh my god. These are cool as hell. Okay, well anyways, there is a Rambler purse bag right there. And don't know the value of the Rambler, Rambler purse bag, but I know the value of this is gonna be super high. Right here, this antique glassware we just found. God, that's exhilarating. All right, a quick little bonus round here. We have a antique cast iron pot with the three legs underneath it. Cast iron. Now this came out of a box that said there's brass pots, but this is cast iron. All right. This says made in Egypt, whatever this thing is. I'm just ruining this tablecloth. I don't care though. Now this is brass, a brass pot. I've never found a brass pot like this before. 
You can tell it's brass by the coloring. If you look in here, it has the green uh, pitting on it down below. I didn't see any, any kind of indication for maker's mark or anything. I think it's just an old pot, old brass pot. I never heard anybody cooking out of brass pots before though. Okay, so we have these little uh, tree tops right here. I like these little tree tops right here. You can spin them like this. These are some, some old ones right here. They're the new fandangled ones. Old tree tops. And the little bag says Carl Zahn for area wear. I'd say 20 bucks for these. They're just vintage. This also came out of that old unit right here. Now this didn't come out of the uh, pilot unit. It would've been cool if it did. But look at this. I had to get the batteries in there and you wind it up. <laughs> See that? <laughs> Got a little trail on it. I don't think it flies. It's too heavy to fly, there's no way. But a uh, little table, maybe table thing? I think it's gonna hit the table if I do that. Yep. A little toy plane. All right, we're gonna end off with one more thing and we've got to cut this into two different videos because um, I didn't foresee this happening this long. Uh, we have um, lots more to go through. But okay, so inside that, uh, that cedar chest, we have this big green blank health blanket. It's a big old blanket right here. Holland Health Blanket Van Wyke. Health blanket. 100% virgin wool, made in Holland. Huge blankie. And it's very, very clean. I don't know what the value of that would be to resell a health blanket. Yeah. Okay, so we find ourselves back in the back office back here, and I wanted to show you this before we head out of here for this video. Um, every time, we get a new unit. I've been trying to put one picture up on this big wall back here of this of the unit we find. And um, you can see I have a couple, it's all from the units I've been grabbing and one each one is from a unit, okay? Uh, this one right here in particular is from that unit we're talking about right now from West Lafayette. Let's get a go close up on here. And you see this old picture. This is found inside of that cedar chest as well. I don't know the date of the picture is or anything like that, but uh, I really like the picture. And then on the back right here, I have hidden, it's an actual book. This is like their family history book. Look through it real quick. This is 1986 down there, but this is when, it's, when it was given to them. Granny tells her story, okay? Now, I'm gonna just pause it right here and you guys can pause the video and look at it. But uh, this is a, um, I think it's an eyewitness talking with her grandmother, like writing down her story as she's told it for generations, right? So she lived to be 97 years old in Charlotte County, or she was born in Charlotte County, Virginia in 1795. So they recounted her old memories in this book, and this goes with the family. And this is really, if I ever get in contact with the family, I'll have all this stuff to give back to them, because there's, there's no value to it to me, but uh, I never have any luck. If this, especially this old, this stuff is this, this old, I won't have really that good luck to try to track down who's the surviving members of this family because everything in there belonged to people who are dead, okay? The storage unit, it was sitting there for 20 plus years. Um, who knows? I, I don't know who to even try to call and contact for any of this stuff, but 
If they do see my video, I have all their old family heirlooms, pictures and stuff like that, and I don't care, I'll give them back to them. It's not like I'm trying to keep it. Okay, so we're gonna call it quits for this episode because we've went through a lot. I've talked a lot and I don't wanna talk anymore, but we found some cool things I didn't even know I had. Um, a lot of valuable things, a lot of old antiques. There's so much more to go through. I'm, not, I'm just gonna throw that out there. This is right here, you're were, we were watching me. I'm just in part, just a little tiny part of my warehouse. Behind you, it's just full of boxes. And we'll, we'll get through the next video. We'll get through some of the stuff I have, I wanted to show, including, I have four sets of these old newspapers. This one on the top end, it says Nixon's trans, transcription of Watergate, right? And that is a full, stack of news oh my god no way so this is not just one of these it's one two three four 